Welcome to the Patient Assessment Management Trauma Skill. In this skill, you will have 10 minutes to perform your assessment and voice treat all conditions and injuries discovered. You should conduct your assessment as you would in the field. Do you have any questions? No. All right. You are dispatched downtown for an adult female patient who was in an altercation. Bystanders said they heard gunshots. PD says they arrived on scene and found her sitting upright outside the bar and they laid her supine. They've cleared the scene and uh, you are cleared in right now. Okay, so we'll take our standard precautions, ensure that the scene is safe. It appears I have one patient based off dispatch. This does sound like a mechanism of injury. We're going to consider additional resources and have my partner hold and maintain manual inline stabilization until I say otherwise. Forming a general impression, we have a young female victim lying supine outside. I will make our approach to the patient here. Hello, ma'am. My name is Mark. I'm an EMT. I do have a few questions for you. What's your name? It's Lily. Okay, Lily, where are we right now? Oh, we're downtown San Diego. And what year is it? 2020. Okay, can you tell me what happened? Yeah, I got shot in the chest. Okay, so we're just going to cut the clothing away here. I'm looking for any life threats. What do I see? You see a sucking chest wound to the right lateral chest wall. Okay, let's go ahead and put some pressure on that with a gloved hand. I'll have my partner get a three-sided occlusive dressing or a chest seal. We're going to apply that on an exhalation. Okay, that holds. And I'm checking for any other immediate life threats. Do I see anything? Negative. Okay. She does have a patent airway since she's speaking. We're going to withhold any adjuncts right now, NPA or OPA. Okay. We might use them later. Uh, we're going to look at the rate and tidal volume. What do I see? She has rapid labored breathing, but effective. Okay. And I'm also going to throw an O2 set on there. What do we have? 88%. Okay. Let's put her on high flow O2 via a non-rebreather mask at 15 liters per minute. I'm checking for any other injuries that may compromise breathing. Do I see anything? Not at this time. Okay, let's go down our circulation, starting off with a physical blood sweep. So I'm going to check for any bleeding on this patient. So you see blood on your left lung. Okay, so on the patient's right arm, it does appear we have a bleed. I'll apply direct pressure. Does that control the bleed? Yes. Okay, let's have a partner go and put a pressure dressing on there while I continue with the rest of the blood sweep. So just checking here for any more bleeding. Do I know anything else? Negative. Okay. So now let's check a pulse. We're going to check two pulses for this assessment, a radial as well as a carotid pulse. What I All right, feel? you have a strong rapid carotid pulse and a weak rapid radial pulse. Okay, I'm going to get some skin signs now as well. The patient is pale, cool, clammy. All right, let's treat this patient for shock considering the mechanism and the presentation. We're going to keep her supine. We're going to throw a blanket over her, heat the ambulance up to 85 degrees, and we already have high flow tube going. <coughs> We're going to get a GCS here. Real quick on the patient, re ask the orientation questions. All right, what's your name? It's Lily. Okay, Lily, where are we? Downtown San Diego. And what year is it? 2020. And do you still remember what happened? Yeah, I got shot. Okay, can you hold up your right arm for me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So she does have a GCS of 15. Considering the mechanism penetrating trauma to the chest, we will make this a priority patient and we are going to expedite transport as soon as it's available. I'm going to delegate a sample history off to my partner. They'll obtain that from any bystanders, maybe some family members witnessed the incident. And I'm going to start with my rapid head-to-toe assessment. We're starting at the head, inspecting for any decap BTLS, that stands for deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, penetrations, burns, tenderness, lacerations, and swelling. So we will start our assessment at the head, inspecting. Do I see anything on visual inspection? Negative. Okay, I'm palpating the scalp behind the ears here. Do I feel anything? Negative. Okay, I'm checking the ears and the nose for any CSF or any blood leaking out of there. All negative. Okay, is the airway still patent? Yes. Okay, I'm going to check the eyes with a pen light. Eyes are a pearl at five millimeters. Okay, moving down to the neck, I'll check the trachea, making sure that the trachea is in line. Yep, trachea is in line. Check for any JVD, jugular venous distension. Negative. Okay, and I'm palpating the back of the neck, checking for any step-offs or crepitus. No pain response on palpation. Okay, for the time being, we'll size and apply a collar appropriately. We might remove that once we do the PMS checks, but for the time being, we'll size that. Checking the collarbones. Stable. Okay, pushing in on the chest here. Stable. And checking the stability of the sternum. Stable. Okay, we'll go ahead and auscultate all six or four fields anteriorly, second and third intercostal space midclavicular. Fourth and fifth intercostal space mid axillary. What do I hear? You have clear lung sounds on the left, absent lung sounds on the right. Okay, to be expected with that mechanism. We'll go down to the abdomen. Do I see anything on inspection? Negative. Okay, we're going to do one palpation per quadrant, checking for any rigidity, tenderness. Do I have any response from the patient? No, negative. Okay. Checking the integrity of the pelvis, I'm going to push down on the ischial crest. 
checking for any rocking, any instability. Uh, pelvis is stable. Okay. Is the patient uh, incontinent or do they have any obvious injuries to the genitalia? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start with the leg palpations now, checking the long bones, the joints, the long bones for each leg. All, right, all stable. Okay. Going down to the feet, we're going to check pulse, motor, and sensation. Mm -hmm. Going to check a posterior tibial pulse. What do I feel? Equal bilaterally. Equal bilaterally. We're going to instruct the patient to push down on my hands. Okay. And pull up. Okay. okay. And can you identify which toe I'm touching? Uh, my left pinky toe. What about on this foot? Um, my right big toe. And can you feel this? Yes. Can you feel this? Yes. So the PMS is intact in the lower extremities. Right. We'll go to the upper extremities, checking the long bone, the joint, long bone Steel. again. I'm checking that pressure dressing, making sure it's holding. Yep, still holding. Okay. Joint and the long bones Steel. down here. Checking pulses bilaterally. Equal. Lily, go ahead and hold your hands up like this. Don't let me push your fingers together. Okay. That's good. Now arms down by your side. <clears throat> What finger am I touching? Uh, my left thumb. What finger am I touching? My right pinky. Can you feel this? Yes. And can you feel this? Yes. So PMS is intact in all four extremities. We'll go ahead and remove that collar right now. There's no indication for the collar being needed. PMS checks are all good to go. Now we're going to inspect the posterior portion of the patient using a log roll. I still have the person on the head, making sure that the head doesn't fall down, but on the head's count of three. We're going to roll towards me. Ready? One, two, three. Checking the back. I'm visually inspecting for any decap ETLS. Also, taking my fingers, walking down the spine, okay, negative. and auscultating the inferior angle of the scapula. Uh, you have, again, clear on the left, diminished or absent on the right. Okay, we're going to move this patient onto some sort of a stretcher or backboard <laughs> scoop device to move them from the ground onto our gurney. Okay, now that we're in the back of our ambulance transporting, we will take a set of vital signs. I want okay. blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate and quality, updated O2 set. Uh, blood pressure is 70 over 40. Respirations are 24 labored but effective. Pulse is 118 and your updated O2 is 92% on your non-rebreather. Okay, so at this time we would manage any secondary injuries. We're going to um, evaluate the quality of the pressure dressing as well as the chest seal. I didn't find any injuries on my head-to-toe assessment besides those two we treated up in the primary. Is that verifiable Correct. with our yep. proctor here? Okay. So as long as the chest seal and the pressure dressing is intact, we're going to reassess this patient every five minutes for LOC, GCS, ABCs, a full set of vital signs, and I'm going to transport this patient to the closest, most appropriate trauma facility. Okay, if your patient started exhibiting signs of increased difficulty breathing, how would you manage that? We would take the chest seal and lift it up on exhalation, allowing some of that entrapped gas to escape, and then place it back on exhalation. Okay, thank you.